Hi everyone, welcome to this session on upskilling your students and um, by using utilising the learning development team or the learning advisors. Um, it's great to see that you're interested in this space because um, learning development is for everybody, not just the students who are struggling. Uh, let's just sit and read together the acknowledgement of country. Thank you. Okay, so today's session, we're going to look at four things in particular. So firstly, what UQ students need, and we'll put that in the framework of um, Lizio's five senses model, and also within the um, new DVCA roadmap. Then we'll look at how learning development can help meet this need at the university. Uh, we'll talk about who is using us currently and how they're benefiting, and then finish by talking about how you can make it easy for students to engage with us. So I'm going to start with a student voice and show you something that struck me um, that was said to me by one student in particular. So this was a student at the end of her degree um, who'd come to me for a one-on-one -on -one appointment. And um, at the end of it, I, uh, she, she expressed this sentiment and I asked her to write that down and send it to me as feedback. And it makes me really sad that, um, that she missed out on things that would have made her degree much easier, but also much more enjoyable for her. Um, so it's our mission to make sure that students can access us right from the beginning of their academic journey. So who is us? <laughs> uh, we, the learning advisors, there's six of us. You can see um, if you go to the learning advisor page, you'll get a little bio on all of us. But in general, we've got a diversity of academic backgrounds. We've got a, a wide range of experience. Um, there are four PhDs or doctors amongst us, two with um, a couple of different master's degrees. Four of us are full time and two are um, 0.6. So we're a very small team and we cover a big <laughs> cohort of students, um, but we're excited to engage with more students in different ways across uh, the semesters. All right, so let's bring us back to the UQ Learning Student Experience Roadmap, um, the position paper that was issued in the 21st of May uh, this year. So we're probably familiar with the, the diagram on the left. Um, around how we're going to encourage flourishing, um, in my words, with students um, at all levels of study. So a couple of things I'd like to point out here, um, and this comes from the uh, roadmap itself. So locating students at the centre of our university. So it sounds good, <laughs> sounds obvious. A couple of the things that come out for me are these. So this idea of appropriate personalised support um, is, is relevant in this space. Um, and also this idea around um, a supportive environment that encourages students to explore, experiment, make their own choices and discover their potential. And you'll see as we go through this, um, this session that this, this kind of sentiment comes out from students who engage with our services. Um, the other thing is that students are supported in their learning and well-being. So this is written into the roadmap. So this is part of the strategy going forward and that they have access to administrative and learning support. And so my, um, my, my message today is let's get that access out there. Let's make it more accessible to them. Okay, so what is the data telling us about where students are now? Um, this data comes from the Student Relations Network, um, all the conversations that were had with students over the past uh, year um, around what all sorts of different questions, but one of the questions was, what are your biggest challenges? And it boiled down to these two things. For first year students, the biggest challenges were academic workload and transition, which is no surprise. And for continuing students, the biggest challenges were their academic skills. So not feeling equipped for their, their study and also um, a difficulty in balancing work, life and study. 
So if we put these two together, we can see that there are kind of three key areas here. The first one is the transition. So an understanding of what university is, what the culture here is, how to adapt to study at university, what self-directed learning means and how to cope with online learning. So these are all the kinds of difficulties in transition. The next um, key kind of theme is this idea of self-management. And so that includes time management, procrastination, which we're all familiar with, <laughs> getting, um, developing regular and useful study habits, um, maintaining their own motivation to study, and of course, uh, life balance, as we saw. And then the final area is the workload. And so here we, the students were talking about the course content, so the difficulty and the volume of course content and their feelings of being overwhelmed um, by the course, but also all of the other things that are going on in life. So we need to respond to these three things um, in order to make sure that students are feeling supported and able to explore and express themselves and all of the, the lovely things that are on the roadmap. So I'm just going to... Um, go to the student voice yet again and so this was a student um, in her first year of her master's this semester and I'm just going to let us read this together I'll give you a minute So this is a success story, <laughs> um, but there's a couple of things I want to highlight in this success story. So the first thing is that you can see that the student was feeling overwhelmed by her workload. You can also see that she was struggling to balance her, her life and her study and that she needed to um, develop her academic skills. So exactly what we saw in the SRN um, data is coming out here in an, in an actual piece of feedback from the student. So the other thing that's important, I think, to notice here is this, that she actually was able to succeed and that she got HDs <laughs> in her first semester. But more importantly, is that she enjoyed it. So potentially this could have been a, a disaster in the way that she was feeling at the beginning. But at the end of the semester, she came out feeling like she was um, she had a good experience. And that was through reaching out to the learning advice. Okay, so let's take a step back and look at a framework for how um, we help students to flourish. So what does it mean in, in actuality? And this is Lizio's Five Senses for Success model, and you can see the reference at the bottom from Griffith University. It was a um, piece of work that was done a few, well, a decade ago now. But what I like about it is that it pulls together all of the things that we've talked about in the roadmap and the SRN data and what we know students need. So we start with this sense of culture. So what is a university? So students need to feel this sense of cultural competence in order to, to, um, to settle down into their studies. So what are the core values and the ethical principles that they, that they need to understand to work well in this space? And then with that comes this idea of um, confidence to navigate the system. So a sense of being able to be self-efficacy, have self-efficacy in finding resources. Um, and so we need to ensure that those resources are clear and accessible to the students. And then the third major area is the sense of capability. So allowing students to know what is expected of them um, and providing development of the skills so that they do become capable and are able to achieve what they need to achieve. And then from those core three, then we get the sense of connectedness and the sense of purpose as students start to develop and grow. So again, I'm going to show you um, a student feedback. Um, again, I'll let you just have a quick look at this from Gui Fang Lu from uh, Master of Applied Linguistics. So what I see here 
uh, aside from the word um, healing, <laughs> which is quite strong, is that it actually shows her journey across this five senses model. So we can see this idea of feeling free to explore and express myself. And this is that sense of purpose that she gained. And then we can see the confidence, so her sense of capability that's developing. We can see that she's got a sense of connectedness because she now feels that she's got some support. So not only by um, the learning advisor, which in this case was me, but also by her tutors in her course and her peers in her course, um, who she was feeling more confident to engage with and reach out to. And then we can also see, as I said, this word healing, which is a very strong word. But it, I think that relates to the sense of culture, that she kind of now understood what she needed to do and what her place was within this system. And with that comes a sense of resourcefulness that she's able to go out and uh, achieve and do and find <laughs> what she needs to do. So my message from all of this is that I think it's time to normalise the use of learning development services. So not only for a remedial type um, space, but for all students in order to allow them to achieve and to grow and to enjoy and to flourish <laughs> in this environment. Okay, let's have a look at um, the current kind of situation again. So again, this is a student who's agreed to uh, allow me to, to use her feedback. So I'll let you read this from Vanessa Marco, who's a grad uh, in grad cert in business first semester. So again, another success story, another student who received sevens at the end. But let's pull this apart because I think this is um, symptomatic of, of the student experience across the board. So first of all, she was walking past a room where um, we happened to ha be having drop-in consultations. So this was a chance encounter for her. She didn't know that learning advisors existed. So she hadn't come across us so far in the semester. And she was um, finding, you know, it, she was overwhelmed. She didn't know where to start with her work. She was in this transition space, trying to understand what she needed to do, what the skills were that she needed. And so we, the learning advice team, were able to help her organise and to scaffold her assignments so, so that she could develop her own sense of capability and resourcefulness in order to tackle them. The other thing is this, um, if she hadn't seen us, she could have possibly failed. So this is someone who we retained, <laughs> that potentially we wouldn't have retained simply because she was uh, she was petrified, <laughs> as she said at the beginning, and she didn't know how to um, break and approach her studies. So she's a high achieving student in the end, someone who was kind of um, could have been, in her own words, someone who failed. And now she's got this, I sense, the question here is how did it contribute to my academic success? So she's using the word success, which shows to me that she's got a sense of confidence and a sense of belonging in this environment. So that's what we want for all of our students. So my message in all of that is that we have a shared responsibility. So the, the academic um, the academics and the learning team share the responsibility to engage students as active members of a learning community and also to assist the students to manage the challenges of their experience. And my um, request is that we start to encourage help-seeking behaviour, not for students who are failing, of course, yes, but for every student. So we, we my request is that we normalise the use of learning development services for all students. So let's have a look at who's using us now and how they're benefiting. So at the moment, this is data from um, Student Hub, semester one, 2023, and this is relating to the one-on-one -on -one individual appointments that learning advisors offer. So we can see here that we've got um, 
we've got a group of students who are new to UQ and, um, and that includes HDR, so students who don't have a GPA. And then we've got a group that are currently on progress improvement plans who are not succeeding. We've got a, a big cohort that are just on that kind of passing level. And then we have a group who are in the five, six, uh, in the six and sevens who are, I would call succeeding students. So we've got a, a cross section of students that come to us. So we also can see that um, it's pretty balanced in terms of international domestic with slightly more domestic students, slightly more female. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, you can have you can see the age group breakdown there, and I think that's kind of in line with the age group across the university. And <clears throat> you can see that um, the disabilities break down there as well. Okay, so you can see that we, there's no particular group of students that we can say use our services more or less than, than any others. So if we look at um, why and what the feedback is from some of these students, let's have a look by the first cohort, the new to UQ and HDR. So I've got two quotes here for you. So the first one is from a new to UQ student. And this was anonymous feedback taken from the student, sub, uh, student hub survey. Um, so we can see that this student has said, great, I've got some tools, thank you very much. Uh, HDR. Isn't that great? <laughs> so PhD candidates are saying that we're useful as well. Okay, let's look at the next cohort here, the students who are currently on PIP. So this was um, not anonymous feedback, um, but you can see here that the student is saying, oh, wow, there's some new information, but also you were kind to me. <laughs> they felt supported. They felt um, that they were capable of understanding this information and that was given to them in a very supportive way. Um, the next group is the group who are passing. And here's a comment from a vet science student. So we can see here that this student is probably struggling with motivation and hence the positivity comment, um, but also that they're taking on board some of the advice and some of the methods and strategies that they've been introduced to in these appointments. And then finally, the succeeding cohort is an example of the kind of things we might see from students. So what we can see from all of these is that we're helping students to express themselves, to um, cope with their workload, to break it down, to scaffold it, and we're doing it in a really supportive way. So we're not doing the work for them, we're helping them to understand what they need to do to achieve at the level. So in this comment here, reminded me to embed theories. So that's a simple thing saying, let's look at the criteria. Let's look at what you've got. Oh, the criteria mentions the use of theory. Have you done that? <laughs> very, very simple, but very effective. And the other thing that we do is um, workshops. You might be familiar with those. You can see at the bottom the semester one statistics that we've done, we've um, delivered to a total of over 6,000 attendees at um, workshops this semester, last semester, sorry. So that's a huge number of people attending. It's not individuals, but it's attendances. And you can see um, in the data here, you, I don't expect you to read all of this, but the key points are that the students found it useful, they found it interesting, they found that it improved their skills, and they found that, or they suggested that they would do more workshops. So obviously they're, they're seeing these as useful. And this is a bit of feedback from um, what students have said about the workshop. So I'll let you just have a quick look at those. So again, you can see a cross section of saying, great, thank you, feeling supported, 
some skills development and this idea of kind of keeping me on track and um, helping me engage and absorb. So there's this real sense of, um, you know, that kind of relationship with the person who's delivered the workshop. Okay, so that brings us to um, what can you do? <laughs> so the key message is to encourage your students to seek help to develop their skills. And I, I when I say help here, I actually just mean seek us out to enhance their skills um, and also to normalize the use of learning development sources, uh, resources, sorry. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So um, I'm gonna go through our website, some videos that are available and some downloadable resources. Um, a quick overview of the workshops and programs that you could be showing and advertising to your students and um, the availability of individual appointments. So what I'm suggesting is that we've got some really great resources that we could that could be included on in your course Blackboard site and here are three of those and you can find them on the um, website here but there's also downloadable links on the PowerPoint. So we've got an editable semester planner. You may have seen these around campus. They're also available in print version and students can pick those up throughout um, O-Week but also regularly in Student Central and in the library. Um, and it allows students to just kind of map out their whole semester. Then we've also got an editable weekly planner that's available online and a daily to do editable planner as well. On that same um, web page, we've got um, templates for assignment planning and quite a few different other things. So please have a look if you're not familiar with it and please encourage your students to use these resources. We've also got short videos by students um, that show tips and strategies. So these videos are around five minutes long um, and you can add them to your course Blackboard site from directly from YouTube. So the YouTube links are here on this um, slide, but you can also find them um, from our website and I'll show you that website. So the, the two here are the kind of key ones. So procrastination, what do you do? What are the, some of the tips to avoid procrastination? And obviously time management is another key one. So being able to embed these into your course page and show students that they're there and available will then lead them on the journey to getting in contact with um, the learning advice resources. We've also got what we call the Study Well, Feel Better series of videos. It's scattered across our, um, our website. So you can see at the, uh, the, at the left there, we've got help with how to study. So the, again, it's a peer-to-peer -peer video, just talking about different kinds of techniques that, to get them set up. Um, and then we've got a whole section around completing exams and how to prepare for exams, et cetera. So again, four or five minute videos that you could be embedding or even uh, sending links to or raising awareness with your cohort that they, those things exist. Um, there's also a little video, that's me. <laughs> um, again, you can download this directly from YouTube, which kind of is seven minutes and it gives students an overview of what learning at university is. And it talks about that transition from a passive learning environment at school into an active learning environment um, self-directed learning at university and it kind of helps students to understand all of, all of the stages there. So I suggest that this is a nice one to put in your course page um, and refer students to in the early stages of your course. We've also got information on the website and downloadable uh, resources around different types of assignments. So the one that's the most popular that we get the most clicks on is how to write a literature review. <laughs> and funnily, I don't know why. Um, so you can see there's a bit of an overview and an explanation, but then it also gives some examples of literature reviews. But we've got um, information on all different types of assignment writing. And again, you can see there in the screenshot that we've got um, a little short video, again, a peer-to-peer -peer video saying to students, hey, this is how you approach your assessment, your assignments. Um, as well as all of the online material uh, that students can access themselves and that you could embed in your Blackboard, um, we deliver workshops across the semester. So you can see here on our kind of main study skills support page. There are the kind of key workshops that we do, but we also do many others. For example, things on presentations, writing your first assignment, paraphrasing, research, exam prep, 
all sorts. And um, particularly the, in the middle of the semester, we do a couple of workshops called Getting Back on Track for those students who've got off track. <laughs> um, so again, you know, re reminding students that these exist and possibly putting some links strategically throughout your course. For example, um, letting students know about the presentation workshop coming up if you have presentations in your course. So uh, we've kind of just organised a little bit um, as a recommendation uh, for students. Again, that's something that you could give to them to say, here are some things like workshops by topic area. If you're struggling in this area or you want to upskill in this area, then these are the workshops that are related to that. Um, we also do multi-session programs. So these happen in the first couple of weeks of semester. So you may be familiar with some of them. Um, one of the newest ones that we've added is the first steps in research, and that's for coursework master's students. And it's not teaching them how to research, it's teaching them how to go about getting started <laughs> and go, get it going through this journey. So it's the academic skills that sit around the research space. And we also do have um, HDR candidate support programs as well. And we work with the grad school to offer some of those. Um, students can access these on the website, but also via Student Hub. So they can just key in the keyword academic and they can see um, what's available and when throughout the whole semester. And then the final thing that we offer um, and this is what you saw the stats for with the individual appointments. And again, we've got a little short video that says, hey, this is what learning advisors can help you with um, on the page where they book an appointment with us. Or they can just book directly via Student Hub as with the um, workshops. So we want to encourage students to come to us, but not as a um, only access, you know. So using the variety of resources that we offer, um, as well as individual appointments, gives students the, the best kind of um, opportunity, I guess, to develop and enhance their skills in different areas. So what are the next steps? So what I would request from you watching this is that you promote our services and resources to your students. So you can do that at your program orientation, at your course orientation, on your course Blackboard site, in your conversations with students, on your discussion board. Uh, you can upload the YouTube, vid YouTube videos directly to your course pages and you can share the time management templates. So the, the kind of three key points really are is encouraging your students to seek help to develop their skills, normalising the learning development um, resources and um, understanding and communicating that students who access support do better at university and we saw that through the comments that we've seen on this presentation today. Okay I'm going to give the last word to a student and this student is an unknown source but this feedback was passed on to our manager from a Bell course lecturer uh, in semester two last year so I'll let you just read this. So again, a nice success story. Um, but the key things that I'd like to point out here is this, that this student was communicating to her lecturer that the advice that she got complemented the course content and it positively shaped her learning experience. And you can see that she uses the words um, that she felt a burst of energy to deep dive into weeks five and six considering how shape assessment too. Um, and again, this was a, a student that I um, had an a, um, appointment with. And I remember that very vividly because she was really keen to go and look at weeks five and six and really get connected to the content because she could see how it was going to come up in her second assessment. Um, and prior to, to discussing that together, she couldn't see the relevance of what she was she was learning in her weeks. So um, 
yeah, so very useful and I hope that convinces you to um, normalise the use of learning development services and recommend that your students use our uh, resources. So, um, yeah, let's increase your students' learning potential together. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, my name is Cherie Millen and you can contact me for any questions, any uh, resources, anything you'd like to talk about. Um, great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.